Today, we're going to look at the complex causes behind motorcycle accidents, and one accident in particular, the Smidzy. We're not here to teach you how to ride, but what we are going to do is to show you how to identify and avoid the accident. This is not a training course, this is Crash Course. My name's Duncan McKillop and I'm an advanced riding instructor. And over the years that I've been riding, I've also done a lot of research into the causes of accidents. In that time, I myself have suffered two Smidzy type crashes, and let me tell you, they hurt a lot and they don't do your motorbike much good either. Today we're going to be looking at an accident that's so popular, it's got its own nickname, the Smidzy. This is Dennis. He's every man. He's the same as you and me. He's been driving for years and never had an accident. Us motorcyclists tend to think of these people as evil, but they're not. They're just ordinary. Today, however, he's going to pull out in front of a motorbike and he's going to say, sorry mate, I didn't see you. Smidzies are caused by a number of factors, the first of which is looming. An oncoming motorcycle starts very small in our field of vision and stays very small for a long time. And then, at the last minute, it gets very big very quickly. This surprises the driver and causes him to slam on the brakes. In this clip, we've put a rider at the other end of the car park. And from our point of view, just look how small he is. He stays small for a long, long time as he comes towards us and at the last minute gets very big, very quickly. So that's looming. Another possible cause of the accident is camouflage. To understand camouflage, let's have a look at the difference between a car and a motorcycle. A car has a very strong outline, big slabs of colour, strong inclusions like radiator grills and windscreens, etc. It's a big and imposing object. A motorcycle, on the other hand, perhaps doesn't have such a strong outline because it's made up of lots of smaller parts. The orange of the indicators, the red of the mudguard, the silver of the forks and so on. Even though the rider's wearing a high-vis jacket in this case, it may help to break up his outline. What that means out on the road is that where we've got a bitty and complex background, a bitty and complex motorcycle can just blend in. What this means is that because we're very, very small and because we don't appear to move too much and because we blend into the background, it means we're camouflaged. And if we are camouflaged, then we cannot be seen. Remember Dennis, our middle-aged driver who's never had an accident? Well, Dennis is just approaching a junction. What he wants to know is, can he go? And he remembers the Green Cross code. Look right, look left, look right again, and if everything's clear, he can go. So let's analyse what happens when Dennis looks to the right. He's looking for hazards. And then he looks to the left and looks for hazards that way too. He then looks back to the right and compares them to the hazards that he might have seen the first time. If he's happy, he can go. But remember, all this just takes a couple of short seconds, and is that really enough time for him to spot the oncoming motorcycle? Because a driver takes so little time to look for hazards, it's our responsibility to make sure that we stand out as strongly as possible. So, we know that the driver takes too little time to look for us. We also know that we're camouflaged, and we also know that it's our responsibility to do something about it. So to make sure that we stand out strongly, we're going to introduce you now to the SIAM, the Smidzy Identification and Avoidance Manoeuvre. 
So, here's the Siam in action. The rider sees a possible Smidzi situation, checks that he's not being overtaken, either by using the mirrors or a shoulder check, and then starts a positive weaving maneuver. This makes sure that he stands out from his background so that he's much easier to detect. Okay, so what's going on here? Here's me on my bike, and there's the car waiting to pull out. Now we won't ride down, we'll walk down, just to make it a bit easier to illustrate what I'm on about. As I'm riding towards the car, what I'm looking for is background movement relative to the car. If there's no background movement, then the chances are that I'm in a smidzy situation and I need to start thinking about a Siam manoeuvre. However, if we do see background movement behind the car, then we know that the smidzy is less likely. Back on the road then, the reason we use the Siam is to make it easier for us to be seen. From the rider's point of view, if we see background moving behind the car, then we know that from the car's point of view, we are moving against our background. This makes us much easier to see and it stops the car from pulling out in front of us. If the background isn't moving behind the car, we must perform the Siam manoeuvre. The strong weaving motion breaks us clear of the background and makes us much easier to see. The solution to lowering motorcycle accidents with regards to uh, collisions uh, with cars, which is the greatest cause of motorcycle accidents, is to improve car driver training. That is the first thing that they need to do. And that is to teach car drivers to be able to look for motorcyclists. That has to be included in their, in their training and testing. The second thing that has to happen is that um, they, they, there needs to be a change in uh, teaching young riders how to avoid collisions at intersections and the present uh, CBT training does not address that sufficiently. So, we've learned today that it's not the riding but the crashing that hurts you. We've looked today at a particular type of accident that you might encounter, the smidzy. We've learned that a combination of looming and camouflage can make you much harder to see. We've also looked a little bit at the Siam manoeuvre. Why not go out and practice it? It might save your life. Mm -hmm.